Hey everyone, so today I am doing your question and answers blog. So I'm going to answer you guys questions that you commented down below on my video and I'm going to be looking down at my laptop because my phone is ridiculous and will probably die in like 3.5 seconds. Let's get this started. Question number one. How hard is it to raise a newborn baby with the father that is somewhat there because of what he does? Please mind my hair because I took it out of a braid and I didn't want to do anything fancy with it today so that's why it looks like crap. Back to the question. How hard is it to raise a newborn baby with the father that is somewhat, I think he means not there because of what he does? Um, it's hard some days more than others but it's kind of like you kind of fall into a routine I guess when you have a baby that you don't really, it's almost, it's not that it's hard, it's just like something that you're adding on and into your life that you have to do every single day. Something that changes a lot of things, but in my eyes, for the better, um, it's not technically, I wouldn't say that it's very hard without him right now because he did help me a ton when he was here, when I had the baby. So it's not that it's really hard because I do have a lot of help from my family and from friends, and if I didn't have help, I would think it would be much harder if I didn't have the help that I do but it's good to it's kind of good to have like a break and kind of like know what it's like to be alone you know what I mean that type of thing were you trying to get pregnant when you found out or was it not planned plus any advice for new moms with newborns I was not trying to get pregnant when I found out it was actually a surprise um, complete shocker but I was not being smart wasn't using my brain so no, it was not planned. It wasn't planned. And any advice for new moms with newborns, any advice I would give you is just do the best that you can. Um, do the best for your baby. Kind of fall into like a schedule and a routine that really helps with things when you have a newborn. Usually newborns, you don't like schedule them. You don't put them to bed at a certain time. But you do want to start a routine when they're a couple months old just so they start to get into the fall of things. But definitely, you know, stay strong, you know, to have a lot of love and support from everyone if you don't you need to just be strong and do whatever you need to do to make sure your baby is well kept for i'm currently 22 weeks pregnant and really wondered what helps you and the baby really sell really settle into routine when you came home from the hospital so quickly thanks erica from england wow from england so 22 weeks pregnant well, it's so exciting. So you wonder what helped you and the baby really settle into routine. So when we came back from the hospital, I was kind of like jumbled around. I really didn't know what was a good routine. I didn't know, since I'm a new mom and I'm young, it's like completely like, okay, what's next? I kind of just let things happen. When we came home from the hospital, introduced her kind of to the house. Obviously, she doesn't know really what's going on in the house, but introduced her to the room, you know, made her familiar with everything. Just, I just fell kind of into a routine of when she's hungry, feeding her, changing her on her um, changing station all the time. Um, just, I feel like you just know what to do. It's not like you don't like kind of study, like you study for a test so you know the answers. You kind of just don't know the answers, you kind of just do it. It's really hard to explain and I feel like you will understand what I mean when you come home from the hospital. Obviously when you come home, you know, you're kind of exhausted. It's been a long couple of days in the hospital. I didn't sleep at all in the hospital. I was just so alert and awake because I just had a baby and things were so different and I was just like, wow, this is crazy. It's kind of like a dream. And when you come home, reality starts to set in. So definitely just try to fall into a type of schedule, you know, just make things, kind of do things the same way or so that you get more used to it and you get more familiar with what you're doing with the baby how old are you is another question I am 19 years old was was your Kenley okay I'm guessing was Kenley an accident or were you planning on it as I said before it was not planned and it wasn't it was obviously like an accident it wasn't planned but I wouldn't say like I wouldn't call it an accident now that I have her but yes it was not planned what piercings do you have currently? I only have my belly button pierced and my ears, my first holes in my ears. I never got my seconds. I don't know why, I just didn't really see the need for it. I wear earrings sometimes, sometimes I don't. It really just depends on how I'm feeling that day. How much money do you spend in a month on Kenley? XX Naomi. If that's how you spell your name. Um, I would say... I'll try to figure it together. So diapers, purchase diapers in bulk just because I don't think it's necessarily 
make sense to purchase diapers by bags because bags are about eight to ten bucks and a box of like 200 are like forty dollars depending on what kind it is or forty five dollars depending what kind it is but usually a bag comes with I think 24 diapers so when you figure that out I'd say so forty five dollars in a box of diapers I'd say she goes through a box of diapers in like of 200 diapers probably in like three weeks so maybe three weeks I'm trying to figure out because usually she goes through like 10 to 12 diapers a day I would say so so they figure 45 for that formula adds in it depends really what kind you're getting the smaller cans are 15 the big tubs are 30 um, it really depends and she goes through about a big can of formula maybe every four days I'd say four days three four days um, what else usually products I have a ton of products now so I'm not really buying them over and over the boogie wipes I am those are five dollars a bag which I absolutely love I'm only I've just gotten the second bag right now so that's five dollars um, I'm trying to think of what else I need to get her a lot of wipes I do have a lot of I only purchased one box of wipes um, and that was 15 bucks they were on sale it was those Huggies um, one and done wipes and it was a big box of three big bags of them so I could fill her wipes warmer so that had that 15 so probably around really it's kind of hard because when they when they first start out and you have all the stuff from your registries and you have gift cards and this you kind of like start off with having everything for like a couple months so at a two month old age I would say I spent about almost 200 which is not a lot at all um, but I'm sure when she's like older a few months more older when I'm buying baby food and rebuying diapers and wipes because I have tons of those already right now from my showers I'm sure it will be much more than that do you and your boyfriend live together yes we do um, he lives with me right now and we are going to be moving out together soon. What do you do for work? I work at a tanning salon. I've been working there for a few years now and I absolutely love it. I work there about five days a week, which is really good with having a baby and I work about six hours usually, every shift. What are your hopes and plans for you and your family in the future years? My hopes and plans are that we're healthy, we're stable, um, we're doing good, you know, things are building up. My hopes are that I can finally get my hairdressing license and become a licensed hairdresser and maybe work in my home. Being a hairdresser and having a kid I think is more, you have more time to spend with your child because it's kind of on your time. And I hope, obviously, we're healthy and things work out for us. How old are you? And you're also a great mom. Well, thank you. Um, I'm 19, as I said before. Let's see, how did you tell your mom you were prego? <laughs> I love that prego. It's like prego sauce. And how did she take it? Well, I told my mom I was pregnant when I was eating dinner with my family, and I hadn't said anything to anyone yet except my sister, who's 21, and I kind of 22 now. But I kind of mentioned it to her, like I think I might be, but I don't know. And we were eating dinner and I just got up from the table and ran to the bathroom and threw up. And my mom like came and she was like, are you okay? Do you feel sick? And I was like, <laughs> I just turned to her and I was like, bomb eyes. I was like, I think I'm pregnant. And like, boom, like her, her facial expression went from like yay to like nay. But she wasn't like pissed. She was more concerned, like just because she kind of went through it because she had kids young. So she was kind of like concerned for me, I, I guess, but she... Right when she found out and when everything was set in stone that I was pregnant, it was kind of like excitement from then on. Okay, so I'm going to be reading from the side because Kenley's on my lap now. So let's see. What were you going to name Kenley if she was a boy? And how did you find out you were pregnant? Wow, that's a good question. If What would I name her? I would probably name her either Noah or... Kaden. I've always liked those names, Noah and Kaden. Do you have any advice for a young mother who is no longer with the baby's father and is struggling to raise the baby by herself? I would definitely say my advice for that is to just keep your head high, keep yourself strong. You know, you're a strong woman. Women are so much stronger than you think they are, especially going through labor and everything. You do realize how strong women are. And I feel like being alone is going to show you how much stronger you really are as a person and how much you can really give your child from just accomplishments that you make as a person. So I'd say keep your head high and as hard as things get, you know, in life you kind of have to just raise your chin up and think of what things you can do to make life better for yourself. Because if you don't, you're just going to sit 
and well in regret and not ever know what could have happened if you changed your life so I would say to live day by day you know take care of your child whether daughter or um, son and just live life be happy don't dwell on it I know that it's I haven't been through the father leaving yet but you know when I go through it if I do I will understand also where you're coming from and since I don't with a baby which it must I, I would say must be really hard you really do have to just put your head up high and just follow your kind of path now because things are different now they're not going to be like they were before so that's my advice for you on that I didn't answer the half of the question before so how did I found out I was pregnant I actually found out I was pregnant from rice pilaf I was actually in Jason's parents house and his father was cooking it and I love rice pilaf and I just was gagging and just uh, the smell of it everything just disgusting and I knew that I, I was late on my period things were not adding up and I was like time to get a test that's how I found out favorite sports teams for hockey Bruins for baseball I'd say the Red Sox for I don't really watch like I don't know I don't watch like I don't really care for basketball. I'm not going to say Celtics because I really don't care for basketball, but I'm from around Boston, so, you know, Boston sport teams all the way. Do you want more kids? If so, when? I do want more kids, obviously. I think I want at least two or three. Um, when? I would say I'm at least going to wait two to three years, and the reason why I say two to three years, you must be like, oh god, is because I don't want my kids to be nine years apart. I want them to be spaced together so that they can spend time with each other and play with each other and enjoy each other around that same age and be there for each other as they grow up. If Kenley was a boy, what would you name her? I already answered that. So either Caden or Noah, probably I could change it to, to something else, but really off the top of my head, probably those. Are you married and does he work? I am not married. Um, we haven't, we have talked about it before. I'm not really in a rush to get married just because I've, I had a baby. I know that that's, you know, sometimes the get-go to do, but then it falls and a lot of people fall into divorce quick. So I'm not really into that. Um, if we do get engaged, we'll probably be engaged for a, a while, a long time, until we finally decide to get married again. I knew Jason for about a year. I've dated him for about a year before we had the baby, so it's not like we've known each other for years. Do you plan on having more kids and when? I guess I answered that, so probably two to three years if I do. And do you plan on moving out soon? Um, we are moving into his parents' house, as I said before, when he comes back from his deployment. And then we will be moving into our own place, either a um, condo or a house, because he wants to buy, he doesn't want to rent. So that's what's kind of pausing us here, which does make sense, because you're paying your mortgage every month instead of just paying your rent that's never coming back to you. And then what were some of your weird cravings? Um, I always craved like Cheerios. I don't know why. Cheerios and like ham sandwiches, even though you're not really supposed to eat deli meats when you're pregnant. I don't know why. I've never heard of that. Yeah, so Cheerios, ham sandwiches, I really liked bananas, let's see, I didn't really have weird cravings to be honest, they weren't like weird as in weird foods, they were more like weird urges to eat gross things in a row I guess. Are you ticklish? Yes, I am very ticklish. Um, why did you move from Boston to Canada? Do you miss Canada and what's the biggest difference between the two? Would you rather stay here or go back? So I moved here from Canada and it's right off the border of Canada. So it's Madawaska, Maine. And that is eight hours up in Maine. It's very far into Maine. My stepfather and my mother had actually met up there and he lived over here where I am now. So we ended up moving over here because my mom fell in love with him and the rest is history. So we moved over here. I'd say down here. Do you miss Canada? Yes, I absolutely do. I say Canada because it's literally, you can walk outside and step two seconds over the border and you're there. Um, it's Madawaska, Maine, but I do really miss it a lot. But I do go a few times every year when I can. We usually drive because it's only eight hours and when you think it's a long drive, it's really not because I'm so used to it. I've been doing it since I was little. But my father still lives there and my whole family, like my entire family still lives there. So we go there and see them all the time, stay with them and spend time with them. Actually, Kenley, Jason and I are going to see them at the beginning of June, not the first week, but the second week of June for I think a week and a half, which is so exciting. What's the difference? Biggest difference between them two would be 
Maine, where I used to live in Maine, it's like literally there's a house and then five miles away there's another house. So it's like so quiet, so private. It's so, there's so much nature up there, animals, you know, it's like you grow up on a farm and you're used to like the quiet life and over here's the busy life, the exciting life, like just everything's so much different over here, the opportunities, it's just, it's a big difference and it has its pros and it has its cons. Would you rather stay here or go back, to be honest? I'd rather go like smack in the middle. Um, I'd rather have the best of both worlds, but you know, sometimes you can't always get that. So maybe more of a suburban type of place um, opposed to like city life. It's because obviously I'm from like the country, so it's it's very different. Can you do a new room tour now that your daughter's getting older to show us what you how you have organized everything? Yes, I actually filmed that today, so you will have that up sometime this week. A new room tour to show things that I've changed and things that have stayed the same since I've had her. Did you breastfeed your daughter after she was born? And if so, when did you transition to formula? So I did. I, from the get-go, I didn't want to breastfeed at all, just kind of a personal opinion. Um, and then after I had her, I kind of felt like I lost bond and I was really upset. It wasn't like depressed because I had her, it was depression because I felt like the doctors took something from me because like my stomach was gone and I was just really upset. And I felt like maybe breastfeeding would help me bond better with her and help me feel better about it. So I did try to breastfeed for about, I'd say two to three days. It just did not work. She was not agreeing. Oh, you chugging. She was not agreeing with my um, colostrum. She was puking a lot. She had an upset stomach. Stomach just was not agreeing with it. So um, I tried to pump out the rest of the colostrum and give her just milk, but it just wasn't working. So after about three days, she was already from the get-go when she came out of me drinking formula. So if I, she wasn't and if she was strictly breastfeeding, maybe it would have been different. What part of Boston are you from? I currently live in Brockton and I'm considering moving into Boston, but I want to find a nice part to live in and raise my kids. I don't live directly in Boston. I live 30 minutes from Boston, so right now I do. Um, when I move to Jason's, I will be closer. There is nice parts of Boston. You just really have to know someone that's familiar with the area. How you dealt with afterbirth and what's to come with that? New day in the life. What are some of the best products you use as today? Love your videos. I'm so proud of you with everything you're going through. Keep staying positive. Uh, thank you. That is so sweet. So, how I dealt with afterbirth and what's to come after that. So, afterbirth, there's a lot of healing going on. There's a lot of um, sleepless nights going on. There's a lot of new things that you're experimenting your life going on. So, how to deal with it is just to go but day by day. Take it day by day. You don't have to rush anything. You know, you have a long time to do this. My hair is being yanked out of my head right now. Um... Honestly, after birth, the healing wasn't as bad as I thought. Obviously, everyone's different because some people get really bad tears. Some people don't heal properly. Some people have the um, C-sections, which are different because you're healing on your stomach stitches rather than down there, which is obviously more comfortable. You can't hold your baby as much. Um, but it, everyone's different of what they go through. And what my experience going through vaginal birth with an epidural and having stitches and the healing process wasn't the most hard thing to adjust to, it would be the sleeping schedule, and it took me about a week to two weeks to get used to it. Um, the waking up every couple hours, and you know, feeding, and I was so tired, my eyes were like rolling in the back of my head, but you get used to it. It's like your body adjusts to new things, it adapts to new things. Just as like animals adapt to new locations when they move places, it's the same thing. It's like climate change. Your body will just adapt to what it is. So my body now usually likes less sleep so when I actually got a full eight hours the other night when she slept like 10 hours for me I was like overtired to the max because I was like I haven't slept like this in so long and I'm just overtired and I was so uncomfortable but honestly it's not like as it's it's different for everyone but it's not as bad as it seems I guess what are some of the best products you use of today I would say I love all Johnson's products for babies they're baby they very safe and if you want to do natural things if you really like naturals try the Johnson baby natural line I do love the Huggies natural diapers I love Pampers too there's differences between everything and when you grow and you're a mom and you learn that there's differences in every product and you know different things that you like whether it's the sizes made the difference made you like them whether she just threw her binky across the room. Hi! It's the sizes of things that will change your mind about products, like the diapers, like I explained before, um, or whether it's just the brand of the product, natural, not natural. It all depends. So honestly, 
I really do like Johnson's lines. Avino Baby's really good. I do like Huggies diapers because they tend to be more comfy on them. Huggies wipes I like more than Pampers because they're not so greasy. I think the the Pampers sensitive wipes are the only ones I've used so far and those are really greasy. I don't know if anyone's used them but when I wipe her it feels like it's just slipping out of my hand and then I get poop on my hand. It's not very exciting but the Huggies wipes really grab it and they don't tear really as good as they don't tear as much as the Pampers do. Um, and then New Day in the Life. I will be doing a New Day in the Life when we are moved into his parents' house just to see how different it is having my days in the life over there. So I will show you guys that when I move over there, which should be soon. And that is the end of my question and answer video. I hope you guys liked it. And I will catch up with you guys when I post the room tour video, which is so exciting. Bye-bye. Look at her hair. Oh, she's mad. She's mad.